DairyUp's P1 project, Unlocking the Potential of Kaikuyu-Based Systems, is investigating the benefits of using remote sensing and database management technologies to optimise milk production from grazed pastures. It aims to increase farmer use of real-time monitoring systems to better inform grazing and harvesting decisions that maximise year-round quality feed. Project leader Dr Martin Correa Luna of Sydney University is collecting data from 15 host farms across the climatic range of New South Wales coastal dairy regions, from Bega in the south to Lismore in the north. Each farm has a mixed pasture system of winter ryegrass and summer kaikuyu. These local partnerships are providing enhanced insight to advance project outcomes. Host farmers are supported by a local advisor to trialpasture.io, an online smartphone accessible subscription platform. Pasture.io uses frequent satellite imagery to automatically measure current available feed across the farm. By setting the rotation length and using the current growth rate, the program sets the area to be allocated to milking cows each day. Importantly, Manual pasture measurements are also being taken to better inform pasture.io's models for New South Wales dairy systems and to validate accuracy of the tool. One of the New South Wales mid-coast sites is located at Stewart's River, owned by dairy farmer Tim Bale, where he is supported by local Dairy Up project officer Josh Hack of Ag Farming Systems. Tim, um, you know, for yourself over the last you know, 18 months or so, I'm um, starting to find your feet with Pasture IO and, and, the, and the system itself. What's some of the, the positive things that you like to see in the program? Oh, I think it, it does help you focus on, on your rotation and, and it does um, make you look a little bit closer at what you are grazing and, and how much you allocate to cows, which we quite often just is guesswork, but it's yep. handy to have something else to bounce that across. Yep. Um, I like the uh, the GPS on the cows, which gives you a record of um, where the cows have been and how long they've been in there. And it's really good to have an accurate reading of how many days ago you fed that paddock. Yep. Um, especially if you're sort of looking at where we should go next. Or uh, like at the moment, we're making silage, so um, which we haven't done for a long time, but <laughs> at least we can look at that and say, well, we know what's ahead of us and we'll skip that. And um, there's a lot more that I could use and I probably intend to have a go at as far as records, yeah. um, transferring a lot of our records that are um, in a book. Paper-based. Uh, yeah. Paper-based. Um, to get them onto that computer um, is uh, could be handy too to just, because I add, I, at the end of the year or end of each month, I add a lot of the fertiliser up in from the book. Um, if it's there, for yeah. me, that'll, that'll save a bit of work just, too. Just tallies it all up at the end of the year. Yeah. And also at the end of the year, if you want to work out how much nitrogen's gone in individual paddocks yeah. or even across the farm, if you're doing things like dairy base and you want to record how much nitrogen went across, you know, the milking area, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, if it's in a digital form, it's a lot easier to get out than going through diaries or, or et cetera, right. trying, to, trying to work it all out. Um, um, what I also like about it is when I come out to the farm with Tim and we do our farm walk, is um, you know we can look at a paddock, bring it up on the map, and we know exactly when that was that was um, grazed or planted or etc. We don't have to go back through diaries or try and rack our memories. Going, oh, it's when I went to town that day. I think I grazed it then. You know, so you know when we're trying to look at leaf count and how quick the grass is growing, um, we've got all that data that's right there in front of us, and it's actual um, um, good data that's not just stuff that we think might have happened at the time. Yeah. So, um, Tim, what about the feed wedge in the program? How do you find that? No, I find that good if you, you can just go and, and uh, press milkers only and that'll show up, you know, your milking area. And you can take out areas that you're going to silage and tells you straight away what your new milking area is. Um, it tells you kilos per hectare and it gives you a growth rate. I, I guess that's not 100% accurate to me, but I guess that's why you're doing um, pasture cuts and everything, trying to correlate that but what is accurate though is the trends you know if you look at the paddock that's got the most in it it is the paddock that you're about to graze so if you look at that feed wedge it'll show you um, where you should be going next yeah and just going on with that accuracy what we've sort of found early parts of the project so far is um, if we don't put any information back into the satellites then we can be out by a fair way in terms of accuracy um, but now we're collecting just plate meters every two weeks 
So we're only doing five paddocks on the farm, so not every paddock, only five paddocks on the farm every two weeks. That data's getting put into Pasture.io, and from our cuts that we've done previously, that's improving our accuracy and the alignment of that. So, um, you know, whilst we, we know it's not as accurate as we want it to be, putting a little bit of data in there definitely helps the machine learning and the, um, and the program learn about what's going on with the climate and where we're at. So hopefully we can improve on that. And if that, you know, helps, you know, rather than having to pasture measure across the whole farm and we're using satellites and a bit of something else, then over time that machine learning gets better, it's gonna be a lot better, so. Yeah.